Item number SCP-2615-J Index If you believe Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures All SCP-2615-J instances are to be contained in standard microhumanoid containment cells, which are then to be stored at Site-17. SCP-2615-J instances are to be fed thrice daily. Description SCP-2615-J is a species of sapient humanoids which measure 15 centimeters tall on average. All SCP-2615-J instances possess wings of varying appearance, though the wings universally match the appearance of the wings of various species of Lepidoptera. SCP-2615-J instances can use these wings to achieve airborne locomotion. SCP-2615-J instances are luminescent, though the light produced generates no heat and has no clear biological or chemical basis. SCP-2615-J instances are capable of limited reality warping, with most of their effects only affecting natural phenomena. Phenomena affected by SCP-2615-J include weather patterns, atmospheric temperature and pressure, animal behavior, and plant growth. Addendum Interview with SCP-2615-J instance number 28 Interviewed SCP-2615-J number 28 Interviewer Dr. Tamlin Begin log Dr. Tamlin Number 28 You are aware that several aspects of your physiology are not scientifically possible, correct? Would you care to explain how they work? SCP-2615-J, number 28. Ah, I get it. You're gonna try the old I-don't-believe-in-fairies trick to try to get rid of us. It's not gonna work, you know. We moved away from existentialism a while back. I'm not sure that you understood the question. For example, you weigh... What? 35 grams? Your wings shouldn't be able to support you in flight. It's magic. The glow is another thing. There's no biological or chemical reason that you should be glowing. Again, magic. But what about... Magic! It's all freaking magic, you idiot. Why can't you get that through your thick skull? At this point, SCP-2615-J number 28's speech degrades into a set of growls, grunts, screams, expletives, and yet-to-be-translated language. I think we're done here. End log. Note. I... sorry about that. Odds are that you're new to the Foundation and got linked to this page as a joke. I'll go ahead and tell you now that anything and everything with a dash J in the name is just an in-joke that somebody made up. They tend to help boost morale. I normally wouldn't put this here, but I just got asked for the fifth time in a week what the larger implications of SCP-2615-J's comments are. There are no larger implications. Dash J's aren't real. Move along and go read SCP-779 or something. Researcher Walker. P.S. I apologize if the humor wasn't readily apparent. It was originally created to get a laugh out of people who were there for the Site-17 picnic of 96. The only reason I can think of that we still have it is because some of the guys like getting a rise out of the newbies. Sky at night. Sailors delight. Red sky at morning. Sailors take warning. The sun dances along the sea. And all their love bleeds red. anti mimetic inoculation confirmed. Please proceed.
Warning. Viewing of this file is restricted to personnel under level 3 oblique 2015 clearance. If you have opened this page in error, please close it. Clear your page history for the last hour and report to your HCML supervisor for Class H amnestics. Your cooperation is appreciated. Item number SCP-2615 Index If you believe Object Class Keta Special Containment Procedures Large-scale dissemination of the falsified information to the public that SCP-2615-A are fictional entities is to be continuously carried out. The claims of individuals that SCP-2615 is real are to be discredited. Any photographic, video, textual, or other information confirming the existence of SCP-2615 is either to be discredited or removed from public availability. A file entitled SCP-2615-J is to be created as a cover for SCP-2615 activity. This file is to be humorous in tone, incorporate modern SCP-2615 stereotypes, and be created using the SCP documentation standardized format. This document is to be filed with a collection of similar documents, all labeled with the suffix dash J, and written as humorous items or anecdotes in the SCP format. This collection of documents may be expanded by personnel, but it is to be made clear that all dash J files are fictional and intended only for the purpose of humor. In the event that any personnel without access to SCP-2615 begins to consider the possible existence of SCP-2615, they are to be directed to the SCP-2615-J document. In the event that a manifestation of SCP-2615 is confirmed, it is to be secured and detained by Mobile Task Force Eta-12, Fe-0C Degrees, and Mu-7 Pariah Priests, until demanifestation. Description SCP-2615 is the collective designation for a species of extratemporal humanoids, SCP-2615-A, and their civilization and culture, SCP-2615-B. The presence of SCP-2615 in baseline reality is directly related to human acceptance of the concept of SCP-2615 as fact. The more humans which accept the concept of SCP-2615 as fact, the greater the presence of SCP-2615 in our timeline. Similarly, the greater the amount of the population which is aware of SCP-2615's concept without believing it is fact the less presence SCP-2615 has in our reality. SCP-2615-A is a species of humanoids. Instances of SCP-2615-A are physiologically very similar to humans, with some notable divergences. The ears of SCP-2615-A taper to a point at the helixes, slightly improving instances' ability to detect low-volume sounds. SCP-2615 instances are also pentachromats. Instances age at a slower rate than humans, with the average natural lifespan being 109 years. Most notably, SCP-2615-A instances possess a small, roughly spherical organ located between the liver and stomach, near the gallbladder. This organ appears connected to the instance's nervous system and is capable of temporarily causing small disruptions in local reality, granting the instance low-level reality-altering abilities. Pentachromats Organisms possessing five different types of cones in their retina, allowing them to see five primary colors. The psychology of SCP-2615-A also differs from humanity. Instances almost universally possess some form of minor obsessive-compulsive disorder. While mostly non-sociopathic, SCP-2615-A instances tend to display highly manipulative tendencies. Finally, SCP-2615-A possess a minimum of two identified emotions with no clear human analog. SCP-2615-B designates the civilization and culture of SCP-2615-A instances. From information recorded during SCP-2615 manifestations, Foundation historians have been able to construct a partial history of SCP-2615-B 
as it would appear should SCP-2615 ever fully manifest in reality. SCP-2615-B history has been categorized into three main periods, as outlined in Addendum 1. Addendum 1 Summarized history of SCP-2615 First Era Unknown through 538 AD Population is primarily composed of tribal groups located in northwestern Europe. Agriculture, nomadic, and hunter-forager lifestyles are practiced by different tribes, with some tribes practicing a mixture of lifestyles. Tribes often carry out raids on human groups and other tribes, taking young and juvenile captives and incorporating them into their own tribe. Belief systems are mostly shamanistic in nature, and consist of a mixture of polytheistic, monotheistic, and animistic religions. A marked belief of iron as an evil substance exists through several tribes, believed to result from the observation of tetanus infectees. Mutual superstition and suspicion exist between humans and SCP-2615-A. Towards the end of the period, SCP-2615-A tribes begin to unite into larger groups. Middle Era 538 AD through 1772 AD for approximately a century, the large groups created by the combination of tribes wage constant war against other groups for land, resources, and political power. Near the end of this century, SCP-2615-B stabilizes into 27 distinct nations, the largest and most powerful of which is based in the British Isles and some areas of France, Belgium, the Netherlands, Norway, Germany, and Denmark. In this and 18 of the other nations, SCP-2615-B is composed of self-regulating and self-sustaining groups of extended family, with some intermarriage between family groups, which pay allegiance and tribute to a central monarch. In seven of the remaining nations, governing bodies are composed of representative democracies, and land is divided into smaller city-states, each regulated by a smaller democratic system composed of the patriarchs and matriarchs of family groups. Each state democracy then would send a representative to the national government. The final nation consisted of a two-party political system, with the two parties referred to as the Summer Court and Winter Court. Each SCP-2615-A instance would decide their party at the age of 15, at which point they were considered an adult. Members of each party were expected to regulate and control other members of their own party. Intermarriage between members of the two parties was forbidden. From late spring to early fall, members of the summer court had full control over members of the winter court. From late fall to early spring, members of the winter court had full control over members of the summer court. SCP-2615-A most commonly set up their territories and dwellings in rural areas and areas unpopulated by humans. Though small territorial disputes occurred over the next millennia, most wars were short, caused little damage, and did not cause any large-scale power shifts. From the 15th to 17th centuries, SCP-2615-B nations began to create colonies across Europe, Africa, Asia, and the Americas. During this time period, there is a marked increase in the presence of anomalies in SCP-2615-B. In most cases, low-level anomalies are utilized by SCP-2615-A for entertainment and utility. In other cases, high-level anomalies form the basis for religions. During this period, there is a slight increase in human SCP-2615 interactions. Though still rare, SCP-2615 instances will occasionally enter business agreements with humans for an exchange of goods or services. SCP-2615-A also widely begin the practices of abducting human infants and raising them in SCP-2615-B, and of planting SCP-2615-A instances to be raised in human society. Modern Era 1772 AD through present day SCP-2615 have spread across the globe, mostly populating areas with low or no human population. Some major human and SCP-2615 cities act as hubs for SCP-2615 human coexistence. 
Some SCP-2615 instances are also known to utilize extra-dimensional spaces for the formation or expansion of nations and to prevent overpopulation. Most SCP-2615 territories swear allegiance to one of 25 of the original 27 SCP-2615-B nations, with two of the original monarchies being incorporated into the largest monarchy. The existence of these territories has changed the geopolitical status of several baseline nations, with most nations having a lesser amount of territory, and many nations having an increase or decrease of wealth or power, based on proximity to and relations with SCP-2615 nations. Notable widespread integration of anomalies into SCP-2615-B and the daily lives of SCP-2615-A. Some overflow of anomalies into human life and society. The Foundation and most groups of interest still in operation, but with no interest in maintaining the secrecy of the anomalous and having a more relaxed attitude towards anomalies. Addendum 2 a common question asked by new members to the SCP-2615 containment project is why we go through the trouble of maintaining the Dash J article, or why we even made it in the first place. Why not just keep doing the same thing that we do to the public, to personnel? The main reason is that it doesn't work. Sure, we can keep telling people that SCP-2615 is all a big myth, but take a second and look around you. Half of the things we contain are what myths are made of. We can keep telling people that SCP-2615 is impossible, but these people work with the impossible every day. As soon as people see what's behind these doors, they begin to wonder what other impossibilities might exist. They begin to wonder about Bigfoot, and the bedtime stories their parents used to read them, and the cure for cancer, and they begin to wonder about fairies. And so, we turn fairies into a joke, let people have a laugh at the impossibility of fairies, and leave them thinking just how silly they were to think that they existed. Josephine Fujimoto